on today's video, I have my husband back on the channel. Uh, so welcome back. Thank you for having me back. You're welcome. And I put, recently I put a poll out asking what, what should be the next video that we should do together if it was how we met or how I start my channel or how we start my channel. And for a big number, about 80%, people want to know how we met. So that's what we're here tonight to talk about how we met. And for people that have been uh, watching my channel for a long time, I had mentioned it before how we met. I met him in Alabama when I traveled over there with a work visa a, a few years back. And we met over there. And but that's, that, that is how, let's say that is how I remember it, I said. So I'm gonna give him the opportunity to talk about and say how we met. So how do you remember that we met? Well, it was more than a few years back. It's only been a few years. <laughs> oh, you need to count years. A few years. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Oh, my God. Um, the company I was working with a year prior to her coming, we had a problem recruiting labor for the demand that we had. I worked in human resources. At that time, we were hiring labor from Central America. And let's just say everybody wasn't, you know, didn't have the right criteria to be working. So we had to get rid of our whole workforce and we had to find out a way to recruit some labor. So having said that, we decided to recruit international through H2B visa programs. And so we started our H2B visa recruiting and that was the year she came, uh, which was in 2007. Mm -hmm. And at the time she arrived, I actually, I actually wasn't even there. I was working in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So I was in Texas. We had a plant that we had just um, took over in Texas. It was a Motorola plant in Texas that we had took over. And I was, I was out there for about maybe about five months, you know, setting up the the temporary staff there and trying to model it after the the plant that we had in Huntsville. So I was out there for, like I said, about five months. Uh, I didn't end up coming back to around November of 2007. I think she came, you came in October. October, yes. And she was there in October. So when my time was up in Fort Worth, I came back to Huntsville so I can, you know, um, coordinate all the logistics of everybody coming in. And at that, at that time, we were expecting, how many people were we expecting? Probably, I think it was something about 2,000 or something Yeah, like we were expecting about 2,000 um, H2B visa workers. And about 1,000 of them were from Jamaica. We had about 60 to maybe about 75 from Dominican Republic. We had some from uh, Peru. We had some from... Uh, Nepal, mm -hmm. um, Colombia, Brazil. So we had, we you know, we we just we recruited pretty much all all in Latin America and like I say in the Caribbean. Like I say, we did have people from Jamaica. So I remember when I got there, a few people were already there. It was probably about, you know, I don't know. It was probably a couple hundred people had already was there because we was bringing in like two, three hundred a week. So one day I walked out into the plant because um, sometimes I spent a lot of my time in the plant kind of overseeing what was going on, making sure everybody was doing what they was doing. And this group of Dominicans walked by and in that group, it was Nabaris and it was some other, you know, ladies in the group too. It was a matter of fact, it was it was a few beautiful women in that group. You know, I'm not gonna even lie. Um, and I remember Nabaris in that group and she had this, and one thing that made her, her stand out is she had this suede sweatsuit on. It was red with the jacket. And she had this- I remember that's that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and she had this white, this white, like, I guess it was a halter top on it, but it was a white shirt up under it. And then the matching suede sweatpants. And it was all tight fitted. And I mean, you know, you guys, you know, y'all know what she working with. So when I, you know, when I seen it, I was like, you know, that's all right, you know, that, that, that's okay right now. <laughs> <laughs> she all right, that's what I was saying. I was like, she all right. So uh, 
But like I say, it was it was a few other people in that group that was, you know, that was, you know, that was nice looking. Just like just like when you come to the Dominican Republic, I mean, um, you just see a whole variety, shades and colors, and that's what that group looked like. And what what stood out to me most is that, you know, they were speaking Spanish. For me, being from Alabama, the only people that spoke Spanish to me were the people from Central America. And they, you know, they they had the the Central America um look to them where dominicans they had that that african-american look some of them did and and they were speaking spanish and i was like you know who are these people speaking spanish i didn't even know that they were from dominican republic you know at that time i really didn't even know anything about dominican republic so i asked my the person that i was with, i said what is this group from they and, <clears throat> excuse me they told me they was from dominican republic i said oh okay long story short i befriended one of the girls that she was living with at the time Y'all were living together, right? Yes, yeah, we were yeah, six yeah, in a yeah, house. Yeah. But what happened was that she was the only, your casa was the only one that was working in the morning. The other five of us was working at night. That, because that's it was right. a pay differential we was working at night. She was the only one that was working at morning time. Right, that, that, that's that's why. That, that You're right, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I met her because <laughs> I, I worked in the daytime. I wasn't working on night. And so, yeah, I was. she was the only one working on day shift and the bearers were working on nights. So I remember one day her and I was talking, I was like, who your friend is? And she's like, who? Uh, and I was like, you know, uh, and I kind of described it. She said, oh, that's that's the bearers. I said, what? How you saying that? She said, that's the bearers. I said, oh, okay. And every time I seen her, I asked her about her friend. So finally, I asked about the bearers. Then finally she asked me, say, won't you say something to her? I like, man, I ain't even say nothing to her. What I'm, you know, what I'm gonna say to her? I don't speak Spanish, man. What I'm gonna say, taco, burrito, that burrito and chilada is Mexican. You know, he was so used to Mexican, Mexican and Central American people. Dominican, you need to talk platano. I ain't know nothing about no platano. I ain't know nothing about none of that. So, you know, that's all I The only Spanish I knew was from Central America because we had a lot of Mexican and Guatemalans that worked there. So one night I had to stay over because I was doing a forklift training for someone. And like Nabir said, she was working a day shift. So... Uh, I was wrapping up my training and I walked out and I was headed home and she said, hey, uh, and when I seen, I said, so I said, what are you doing? I said, what you doing still doing here? Because this was after six o'clock. The shift changed from, it was, there was 12 hour shift, six to six. She was like, oh, I missed my ride or some, some, what, some she said, I don't know. Cause I don't remember why she was still there, but she needed a ride home. And she asked me to take her home. So I said, yeah, I'll take her home. I'll take you home. And so, um, and I wasn't even thinking in my, my my mind that, you know, when I take her home, uh, you know, that I, you know, I'm a senior bear that she's going to be there. I didn't even think any, anything about that. So I ended up taking her home. And when I pulled up, when we pulled up to the driveway, I, I kept the car on because I was waiting for her to get out and I was going to bag up and I was going to leave. And she said, you want to come in? I said, no, I don't want to come in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not coming in. She said, the bear is in there. I said, I still don't want to come in. I ain't finna go in there. And she said, come on, come on, go in. And I said, all right, all right. And then she said, and there was another guy that worked there. His name was Michael. He was in there. He said, Michael in here too. And I knew Michael. He said, Michael in here too. I said, all right, so let me go in. So when I walked in, um, she didn't even know I was coming. And uh, when she when I walked in, she wasn't even there. I, was, I just sat down and I was talking to the guy, Michael. And then next thing you know, she comes to the room, mouth full of food. No, I mean, you was, uh, you, when the, the room that you got in was another room. We were sitting over there in the other room eating. Yeah, I was eating. in the front room. Mm -hmm. So there had to be someone in the back room. And then when, I, when she came to and saw me, she had a mouth full of food. And she was like, you know, because she was kind of surprised to see me because I mean, I'm not, I'm gonna just say it like this, the position I had while I worked at, I was seen as, I was seen as the boss, which I, I mean, I really was in, certain, in a certain capacity. So people looked at me a little bit different than, you know, just the average person. So for me showing up and being at, at their house, you know, it was kind of shocking. So that's, you know, she gave me that look. That was a look on her face like, wow. And then from there, they asked me, did I want something to eat? Did I eat that day? Yeah. <laughs> I, I probably didn't eat nothing. He don't eat everywhere, so I, I know that you didn't eat over there that day. So from that day, that was our first conversation. And after that, we just, you know, we continued to talk. And, you know, when I saw her work, you know, I speak to her, you know, we'll have conversations. And, you know, over time, things just developed and developed. 
Now, um, I do remember the first time we actually went out. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a jail of this. Yeah. I think well, that was that night, yeah. yeah. We went to, uh, matter of fact, that same guy, Michael, he was dating one of, one of her. The first, yeah, one of my friends that was work. Was a roommate. Well, actually, mm -hmm. yeah, the roommate that you were staying with her. And they, you know, we went out on this double date to this uh, Mexican restaurant, and I remember showing up, and um, she had this yellow dress on. Nice, I mean, nice man. You know, I ain't gonna even lie to you. It was nice. And we went to this Mexican restaurant, and I remember after the Mexican restaurant, I took her home, back home, and. I was I was getting ready to I was getting ready to walk away and she was looking at me like man you don't give me no sugar dog. Uh, was I looking at you yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know to the day you wanted some sugar. Oh my god! I ain't giving no sugar, y'all. I walked away. That's what he remembered. Yeah, no, that's the truth. <laughs> she she wanted me to give her some sugar that day. I ain't giving no sugar. I walked away. That's what that's my recollection. <laughs> yes, yes. He recollects <laughs> very well. Yes, it's exactly what he said. The only thing that in my videos, in my preview video, I have talked about how we meet exactly the place and the, the city, but not exactly how we meet, like how it happened. But yeah, that is exactly how it happened. And another thing that I know that a lot of people, I mean, not that a lot of people want to know, but uh, some of the things that always people talk about when they are. Uh, let's say in a relationship with uh, somebody from a different culture is, especially when it's a uh, language barrier, is how you manage with the language. If it was easy, is, if it was difficult, if it was easy. Uh, one of the things that I have to say, it wasn't easy at all. I didn't know any English at all. I was just finish, finished college when I, when I left. I finished college in 2006. So, yes, 2006, at the end of 2006. Yeah, I was planning to uh, go into a cruise to get uh, to get some um, experience because I studied hotel management and I didn't know any English, so I wanted to get some experience. Yeah, I was about to go in this cruise, but then this other opportunity came, and this that is when I decided to go to the U.S. But I didn't know any English, so when I got there was when I started. I took classes in Cal Calhoun Community College. I used to go three times per week at mm. night after work. So some of the <laughs> some of the craziest thing that <laughs> he had to say some of the some what is some of the craziest that I used to say when I came when when I couldn't communicate because when you don't know the language I mean, I'm learning he knew, he knew a little Spanish because he was like I say he was working over there with um, uh, a Spanish language speaker like Mexican and Guatemalan so he was kind of used to the, the the Spanish already but I didn't know anything so it was. A little difficult and complicated to, to try to communicate right right so yeah it, you know some of the things that was that was funny to me that she you know when we wanted like chicken wings she didn't know how to say chicken wings you know and they and they and they language just elitas so she asked me do you want something to eat you know and I like what you and she was saying chicken wings she'll do like this <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I guess, I guess I guess I eat that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the only thing that I used to. Yes. Yes. So yes, when I'm trying to communicate or say something, if I don't know the word, I will try to do something that is similar to what I'm trying to say. That way you can understand me. So I used to say whenever I want to talk about the wing, chicken wings, I used to do like this. <laughs> but he knew he understood. It. He, we was able to communicate. And the other thing that was funny to me is when. Um, she didn't know how to say sheets on your bed, like sheets, comforter, uh, you know, pillowcases. So she'll call them bed clothes. Say you, hey, can, you, you, you want, can I watch? You won't need me to wash your bed clothes. I'm like bed clothes. <laughs> what do you mean bed clothes? These sheets, comforter, pillowcases. She don't. She just called the clothes for the bed. So she called them bed clothes. I thought that was funny. That. That was so crazy. Yeah. I remember the I remember the first I wouldn't even call it an argument, but I call it a, you know, kind of like a disagreement. Uh because I remember asking, I said, I said, "What's the speed limit over there?" And she was telling me, she said, "It's 100 miles, 100." She just said 100. I said 100. 
I said, ain't no way in the world there's 100 over there. Because, you know, the speed limit in the States is like 65 or 70. Back then it was probably 65 or 70. Um, and she like, no, it's 100. I said, man, there ain't no 100. Ain't nobody going 100 miles per hour on the street. I just, I like, I just, no, it ain't. She kept saying it was. I said, it's not. I don't believe it. Come to find out, they clocked their, their, their miles in kilometers. In kilometers, yeah. So in kilometers, it is 100. You know, it is a, me not knowing that. And I'm like, and we going back and forth. And I'm like, this mother, this girl lying. Man, I, I was, I wasn't, I didn't even know how to drive. I just know it was 100 because I used to see, hear people talking about this person was about 100. It was about 200. I mean, 100 a kilometer per hour drive, you know, whatever. And he asked me, I just said 100. I didn't know that there was kilometer and miles. miles. I just don't, I just knew there was 100. Right. So things like that, we had to kind of like, you know, overcome those things and kind of, you know, learn each other's culture. Like she said, I was, um, I was mostly around Mexican people uh, and people from Central America. Not that I understood their culture, uh, but I knew it a little bit better because I worked around them at that time for, for years, many years, you know. So uh, trying to understand her culture was, you know, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but it was just new to me. You know what I'm saying? Something that was new. It was never a point where I felt like that I ain't want to learn that or I ain't want like I was really eager to kind of like know more about it you know not in the sense of what not in the sense of tell me tell me tell me tell me but more like just just intrigued by it. you know I wanted to hear more I wanted to know more you know I was really accepting of that I know most some well some people you know, when they get in these relationships, especially with foreign women, you know, they want to take the foreign women out their culture and immediately, you know, uh, put them in, you know, American culture. And um, I can tell you right now that, you know, that's that's not something that's going to, typically that's not going to work. You know, you can't force anybody to accept your culture. I mean, totally get rid of their culture and accept your culture. So, you know, yeah, it just has to be a compromise somewhere in there. And one thing I think that helped I think that's one of the things that's kind of helped her and I out is, is that obviously she wanted to know about American culture. If she did, she wouldn't even want to, she wouldn't even been here. You know what I'm saying? She wouldn't never came to America. Although we know she came to, you know, to make money, but also you still have to understand you have to be willing to adapt to the culture. And for me, I was also open minded and I wanted to, you know, learn more about the culture. So I think that that right there helped us at the, you know, yeah. um, with, with our relationship. I agree. And one thing that you was very often, it was to the music. I remember beside the food, because you always been very particular about food and what you eat. Still today you haven't eaten some Dominican dishes that I want to make. He is known, like he don't like it, but then when he eat it, then he like it. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things that he was very open was to the music. I remember, I mean, uh, when I met you, you was already listening to salsa, mm -hmm. no bachata, but I think yeah. he was listening to Reggaeton. To reggaeton yeah. and salsa. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I always had Daddy Yankee and Winston and Yandel. I just love those 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 artists. And when she came around. Who's that guy you love? Yo no sé, mañana. Oh, and um, Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique. Mm -hmm. And I used to buy these things and think that I was going to impress her too. Like, you know, I'm listening to this. Right? You, you know, you don't even know. I, I know about this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I really, I, but I really like the music. Like, I to this day, I love reggaeton. Well, some of the reggaeton is okay. That newer reggaeton is okay. But I love Daddy Yankee. I love Winston and Yandel. Uh, Luis Enrique. Um, Juan Luis Guerra. Um, who else? It's a lot to. of music. And then a lot of the like salsa Romeo stuff. Like and, and spe and yeah, Court Romel. Romel. I, you know, I like Romel. So, and she right. I was really open to the music. Really, really open to the music. That I would say that you will know probably particular to the language or the cooking, but the music you were... Right. So the language barrier part kind of went on for about a year and a half until she, you know, she finally learned how to speak English. Um, enough to a point where, you know, she didn't have to do this anymore. And she didn't have to say bed clothes. You know, she was able to, you know, comprehend and understand, you know, what I was saying. And from that point, you know, we started, you know, we started traveling, you know, we were going, you know, went to Vegas, what, two or three, three times, times, three times. You know, we ended up going San to Francisco. You know, no, San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. We went to Bermuda the first time. Um, we, yeah. we went to San Antonio as well. We went to 
to, Nuevo, to Mexico? Yeah, Nuevo Laredo. Yeah. Mexico. Tijuana. No, we went to no, we went to San Diego too. So we went to San Diego and we was in San Diego. We we drove over to and then now this way oh it was my crazy. God. Now when we, when we went to Tia, when we went to San Diego, uh you only had your work visa at that yes, time. At that time I didn't have and anything, my just my work visa. I was just recently it wasn't no too uh, long after I came to US, it was probably about six, six months. Yeah, maybe a little bit longer. And we ended up going to San Diego and we drove across over to Tijuana. And man, when I tell you on the way back, I thought they were only let up back in the country with me, man. Yeah, you know, they they terrible. they set us, they pulled, they had us pulled to the side. They set us over there for, I don't know, we sat there for a long time. They because she my paperwork. Checking my paperwork because she didn't have a, she, I mean, she she only had a visa, work visa to work. And you know, that's kind of, they looking at that like that's, that's they, suspect. Why, you know? why is she doing over here? And finally, they let us go. Uh, but I thought I was going to have to come back to Alabama with Donald and leave over there to Mexico, man. But, uh, so leave me in Mexico <laughs> for what? Did they cheat me about to come to the Republic or leave me in Mexico? Well, you speak the language. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you just go over there to eat some tacos and mm. enchiladas. Taco. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, you know, we, we did a, you know, we did several trips and things like that. So, you know, over time things started to get better, but I wouldn't. I'm not going to say that you know that it, there was no more hiccups along the way, because of course um, there are always hiccups in, in a relationship, especially when you're in you know one as 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 long as we have been in one. So um, as you know, when you're in a relationship, especially when you are, um, it's like you said, when you're in a you're in two different cultures, it almost kind of compounds some of the issues you have because. You know, you don't understand that person really, and they don't really understand you. And I think, especially in the beginning, I think now I think we understand each other a lot. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, I, I ain't gonna say I think, I th you know, I do, I understand you a lot. And I think she, I know she understands me a lot. So from that standpoint, though, you know, we don't have those those type of issues like that. So. Yes, we don't yeah. have, but uh, it was it was a little uh, difficult at the beginning. I mean, you know, like it's easy, like some people think, I mean, when you are, uh, Get into any relationship, as a matter of fact, you need to be willing uh, to to have patience, and especially if you are in a different culture and in a language barrier, a language barrier, and all that together. So you need to have a lot of patience in a relationship. So it was a little difficult, but we are still here. And from that, we how to say we stayed in the relationship like we didn't live together or anything like that for about. What six years? Yeah. I think it was six years until we yeah, until I got pregnant. That's what we was doing. we was we have a relationship, but we was it wasn't living together until I got pregnant with uh, our daughter. So once things started getting serious with us, she quit the job that she came over there on her work visa for, and she ended up um, buying a small cafe. cafe. And she was running a cafe in one of the main banks in, in Huntsville. So she had a little small cafe down there and she was running that. So once she got pregnant, she ended up selling it because she had nobody to run it. And at that time, I really didn't want her to, to actually be, you know, back and forth at work. Because you ran it for a minute. Yeah, yeah at the beginning it, I it, did, it, at it, a certain point when everything was bothering me. Right. <laughs> you know, like pregnant right. with me getting to that mood that everything is bothering me. Even the feet, you know, she was standing up all I day. I it was cooking something that I couldn't stand anymore. It was one, one of the things that people most like it. So, <laughs> say, I can't do this anymore. So, that's when she ended up selling it. Then she came and <clears throat> she, that's when she moved in with me. Um, after that, that's when then then when Leah was born, she started. You know, she wanted to. You know, her mom at the time. I don't think your mom even had her mom didn't even have a. a um, I started the process when I was uh, pregnant. Yeah, right. yeah, I was going back and forth. I came a lot. I stay a lot in Dominican Republic. Right, when because I was her pregnant. mom couldn't come over, so mm -hmm. she was flying back and forth. Like the first year of my daughter, she spent more time probably in Dominican Republic than she did actually in the states. So she was back and forth, and while she was over there, she started. You know, we started thinking about ideas to start a business and that's when the, you know the restaurant uh, idea came up and the hair salon idea came up and this was like in 2014 and you know those ideas just kept 
popping up and we kept discussing them. And in 2015, that's when we said, all right, let's, let's do it. And we ended up packing everything up, moved over here. We started the restaurant and you guys already know what, you know, you know how that went. You know, we she said did videos on that. No need to get into that whole story. <laughs> the whole story, yeah. But yeah, that's what it happened. Then in 2015, we just moved here. We mm -hmm. first started the salon, and then the restaurant, and then the rest. You already know the rest. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much how it happened. But I want to say one thing too, um, because you know, one thing I can say about the beverage is is that you know. She, from the time she came, when she, from the time she got to the States, I mean, she was always working. She was a hard worker. She always, you know, um, she always had this this mindset that, you know, she wanted more, you know, and, and I saw that it was it was noticeable. She came over here with a a um, a plan, and her plan was, even though I, <laughs> it may not have been as realistic as she thought it, she made it up in her head, but he, but she did have a plan, and that was to you know to make some money and to um, you know help her mom out and her and her and her, her family out, and that was always her thing. Is that you know I want to come here, I want to make some money, and I want to um, help my family out. So with the position I had in my company, I was able to put her in roles where she could take advantage of the opportunity. And every time I put her somewhere, she took advantage of the opportunity, and you know. That was a time when she would she would be working, you know, sixty hours a week. Sixty-five, as a matter of fact, I remember. Hours a week, you know, and I and I'll be calling her like I called, you know, all you know the people who work for me. I need you to show up if I needed them to show up or cover a Next shift. Stay at the, four thirty in the morning. She always did it. She always did it. So and like I say, she took advantage of it. I don't know a lot of people that would have took advantage, even even though. The opportunity was there. You could see where the money could be made. Most people wouldn't take advantage of that opportunity. And that year, I don't, I can't remember when, what year it is, but trust me, she made more money in that year than she probably, well, I ain't gonna say probably, I know that, well, now, you probably can't say that now, but at that time, more money than she's seen in her entire life. Probably made more money than, you know, her mom, dad, and everybody put together. You I know. did, did. It was one year that I did work a lot. Yeah, I did. I did make a lot of money. I was able to. I mean, you just have to. You think I was able being a resident. I wasn't even a citizen. Yeah, I was able to apply to buy my first my home over there. Yeah, I was able to do it. Yeah, I did. It. I mean, if you don't have the the way you can prove that, you know how difficult it is uh, over there for you to get a house. Yeah, I was able to do it. And you bought a what a thirty thousand dollar car? I bought. Oh my god. I was, did I make a story about the car that people thought that I was on fire on the parking lot? I have this car that I was so embarrassed about it. And then I went a few days in a, in a home for a car. And when I saw that car, it was the Honda, the new Honda that looked like the, B, the BMW X6 or something like that. It had the same, but it, it was- the, It was a cross tour, those Honda cross, cross yeah. tour. When I saw When they car, first came out, they were nice. It was a thirty-five thousand dollar that yeah, bought that car. <laughs> so that tells you how much she was making. Let me tell you something: the people who came with her was not making close to that, and some of them was given the same opportunity that you were given. Um, but some of them, I, what I have to say, you know, because I want to talk about, good about myself. But some of them, it, it, when you go over there into the United States, you the same opportunities for everybody, but not everybody take advantage of like. Calhoun was there for anybody that want to go on and learn how to speak English, but there was many people. From the people that I used to live with, I think that I was the only one. They started with me, but then they got lazy, they didn't want to go. And then a lot of them moved to New York because they have family over there, but I was the only one that stayed in Huntsville because I have no family, so I have to stay over there. And I twisted her arm to stay too. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I was thinking to go because my friend was leaving. And I said, well, what am I do here? Because I'm by myself. I had no family there, but I had no family here either. He, at least I know they they going to New York, but uh, he convinced me I stayed. And uh, but I went to Cahun. I Also, when I went over there, I my, what I used to watch in TV was entire English. I didn't put no Spanish cable TV to watch no telelo telenovelas or anything like that. Something that we do, you used to do a lot here. I don't watch telenovelas now, but in that time, I didn't put no. Spanish uh, cable or anything, I 
I, I intentionally you watch everything in English that way I can even learn faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and tell them even though you know I was I was making pretty decent too, and when we had when we went on our trips, what did I tell you to do? That was something that I, I tell you that was hard for me, hard for me when I hear the. <laughs> <laughs> you know I asked for our hand. culture, our culture yeah. is when men put most, most of the money, and guys take care of most majority. But he told me that I needed to put the fifty percent. Yeah, I think that's what I talk about in one of my yeah. videos. That I talk about the fifty. When we 50. travel, <laughs> I told like, you, you make enough yeah, money. You <laughs> make enough money. I put you in the now. If you was because when she first came, now she was making six twenty-five an hour. Seven twenty-five was at that moment the minimum when, wage. Was it? No, it wasn't on seven twenty-five. Yeah, it was seven twenty-five. Seven twenty-five. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's making seven twenty-five. I, I I put her in a position where she's making way more than that, and she was and where she had unlimited overtime. Like I say, she was making more money than she ever saw I in her life. I did a lot of overtime. And why would I? Why would I? Why would I pay for all of it? No. I'm, the man. Yeah, because I was a man, yeah. Man at that time, do that. at that time, that's what, I was on that 50-50 stuff, I ain't gonna lie. I was on that, but now, no, she, she don't have to do nothing now. She, you know, I'm, she, it's 100% on that. It was, it was, it was that, yeah. that mentality. Yeah, well, I was making my money, I can't even complain and say, oh, I was making money. Yeah, you had enough money, I was being there. No, I wasn't. You know, she was, you know, she, 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 she can afford to go half, you know, to go, to go on a trip. She can afford to go half, so. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, that is how we met. How we met, yeah, that, is, um, that, that was the development of the relationship until then, until we have our daughter, and then we went back, and you already know this story, and then we, we came back here, and then you all know all that, because I mean, talk about it in so many videos about it. Right, right, so. If there's anything else that you are interested in, no. Um, yeah, of course we're here. Mm -hmm. This is not gonna be the last video because then we're gonna talk about how and why we started our channel. I mean, his version. You hear it from me and you hear little pieces here and little pieces there, but um, his real reason because he was the creator of my channel. So you have to hear his side. Yeah, and you know, and people asked that in the last video, they requested that we talk about that. Not, not just so much of how we started the channel, but more so than, you know, how do we use the channel to um, help us, you know, move over here to Dominican Republic. How we use the channel to help pay for our lifestyle, things of that nature. Cause it, you know, it's some details that, you know, that like I say, she said some things before on her channel, but you know, she left a lot of things out, some things out because, you know, we just didn't want to share them, but now, um, we didn't want to share them at that time. Not that we we're never going to share them. We just didn't want to share them at that time. But, you know, we got some other details that we, you know, we're going to share as to, um, you know, how this thing was, you know, put together and um, how we kind of made it work. At least for us, you know, it's, it's, it's working. Some people may not think it's working, but for us, it's, it's, it's working. So. so, guys, this is what we have as a how we made. I know that probably you have some questions. So, if you have any questions or anything else that you want to know, just please leave a comment down below. Is there anything that you want to say before we go? Yeah, what, what that, what's that one comment that, that lady said that, did, that, it was, that there was a boring topic? That how we met was boring? Yeah, yeah it was a comment, but I, I yeah. can't remember exactly how she said it. Y'all thought y'all thought that was boring. Let us know. I mean, she said that was gonna be boring. Yeah. I don't think it was. I think it was fun. How we met was fun. Yeah. 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 It wasn't boring. Yeah. She boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, she's boring. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I see you in my next one. Bye. So on today's video. I have my husband back. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recently, and about asking if he, what should be the next video that we should do together, if it will how we meet or how we start with our, or my. Okay. What, what are you looking at this or are you looking at that? Look at that. Okay. Yeah. So on today's video, I have my husband back in the channel, or on the channel or in the channel? In on, the channel. In the channel.
I'm on top of the channel. I'm inside. Man, you get started like that. That way you can put it out. He is in the channel. Man. Okay. You're in. in. No, on the channel. Okay. Yeah. So you say you say this you be be playing with me, then you say on top of the channel. That way I can say things wrong. No, I, but I was trying to figure out how what context you were putting it in. Like Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, know what context is like. Yeah. So let's start this over again. So on today's video, I have my husband back. So welcome to the channel back again. And I post recently I put a poll out asking what was the next video that I should do with my husband, if it was like how we start our channel or how we met and by a big number, by 80% people want to hear about how we met. So we decided to make this video today and we are going to talk about how we met. And it's not the first time for the people that have been in my channel before. Start over. You, you sound like you're nervous. No, I'm not ever comfortable. You, no, you all, but you always start off like that with the, the okay. rocking back and forth and then the upside down smile like that. Smile. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But everything over again? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah.